Republicans getting out the vote. This is a matter of the Democrats failing to get out the vote, abysmally. And they failed to get out the vote for the reason that we told you here before here, because Roland Martin can't galvanize the damn vote. I chased his big cream puff marshmallow man built ass around Louisiana last year. While he was dodging me all over the Superdome, he must have burned about 6,000 calories running from me. He couldn't help Gary Chambers to win anything. And he wasn't able to help the Democrats to get anything else. That's the issue. The Democrats have attempted to win elections now by turning it over to operatives as opposed to dealing with the hell we said because they've been operating under the assumption that, well, you know, if they ain't got no choice now, they just gonna vote the way we, the way we leave it. They just gonna vote that way. It didn't go that way. I'm looking at an article from the Louisiana Illuminator. This is from back in September from the Louisiana Illuminator by Jeff LaRose. Headline, Democrat Sean Wilson making the governor's runoff isn't necessarily a lock. Here's the very first sentence from that article. You can't put it much more bluntly than independent Hunter Lundy did at Friday's televised governor's debate. Quote, Sean Wilson cannot win this race. He has zero chance of winning the race, Lundy said, trying to position himself as an alternative to the party favorites in the next month's election. This was last month this article came out. Well, it certainly came to pass that way. Certainly came to pass that way. We know it did because here's the headline from CNN. I'm sorry, from the Associated Press. Republican Jeff Landry wins the Louisiana governor's race, reclaims the office for the GOP. And from the advocate, that's basically the official newspaper of Louisiana, Jeff Landry scores outright victory in race for Louisiana's governor. Now, you have to understand how this works for our elections in Louisiana. Jeff Landry will be the 57th governor of Louisiana after scoring a surprise outright victory in Saturday's primary that gives him a mandate to move Louisiana to the right with a like-minded legislature. Landry, the Republican attorney general for the past eight years, will succeed Governor John Bell Edwards in January. Edwards has been the new governor's, uh, Edwards has been the new governor's Democratic foe. Polls had forecast Landry to be forced into a runoff by Sean Wilson by capturing less than 50% of the vote. So the polls before now were telling everybody that Sean Wilson was competitive and that it was going to be a runoff for governor. The article goes on to say, but Wilson underperformed, especially among African-American voters. Sean Wilson is black, by the way. Sean Wilson, the Democrat candidate for governor, black, he, they, they have been predicting to the polls that there was going to be a runoff. Well, no, nope, that didn't happen last night. And because he underperformed with the black vote. So they were going to go march another one of their handpicked Negroes out there, and he was going to get everybody on board. And uh, yeah, it didn't work that way. Wilson underperformed, especially among African-American voters, collecting only about half as many votes as the attorney general. Landry picked up more votes than expected. Landry won about 51.5% of the vote compared to 26% for Wilson. Let me say that again. The last governor of Louisiana was a Democrat, John Bell Edwards. He's the current governor. The last governor was a Democrat. The Republican attorney general got 51% of the vote. The Democrat challenger, 26%. Attesting to Landry's strength, none of the four other major candidates on the ballot even reached 10% in their vote totals. Landry walked on stage to blaring Cajun music at 10, 16 p.m., flanked by family, friends, and U.S. Representative Clay Higgins, who represents Acadiana. Landry was introduced as Louisiana's governor-elect. Quote, tonight's election says that our state is united and it's a wake-up call, he told the crowd. It's a message that we are going to expect more out of our government. He walked off stage to raucous cheers and the violin-laden intro of Garth Brooks' Call in Baton Rouge. 
Wilson conceded about 30 minutes later, telling a crowd in New Orleans that, quote, there are no regrets in the Wilson household. There are also no victories, sir. He called on his supporters to join him in making sure the new governor keeps his promise to retain the expansion of Medicaid to the working poor, which was instituted by Edwards. Well, there goes the black vote. This is straight up bowling ball Martin's alley. This is the black vote. This is what they're offering the black vote. Come vote for me. We're going to give you more Medicaid. That's, that's what they're telling the black vote in Louisiana to vote for. More Medicaid. Then you wonder why you got sent packing with 26% of the vote. He underperformed among black folks. I'm surprised there was anybody who showed up if he told you what you were actually voting for. Quote, don't give up on Louisiana. He exhorted everyone to cheers. The overall turnout was 36.5%, which veteran pollster Greg Rigamir, which was several points less than expected. Quote, right now, people are fed up with what's happening in Washington, said Carlos Metaxas, a Wilson voter in New Orleans. Landry proved to be a strong campaigner in the primary, vastly outraising all the other candidates and securing endorsements over four other major Republican candidates from former President Donald Trump, the Louisiana Republican Party, U.S. Senator Bill Cassidy, U.S. Representative Steve Scalise Higgins, U.S. Representative Mike Johnson, the Louisiana Sheriff's Association, and other interest groups, including Baskin Robbins, apparently. In campaign appearances, TV ads, and mailers during the primary, Landry pitched himself as a battle-tested conservative who knows what it takes to fight crime, keep woke politics out of the classroom, and build stronger families. Wilson, a Democrat, secured the endorsement of Edwards, the Louisiana Democratic Party, and U.S. Representative Troy Carter, the only Democrat in Louisiana's congressional delegation. He has also snagged the endorsement of the Louisiana AFL-CIO. In other words, he's a black candidate for the Democrats who has no black support because he's not actually running on anything we want. Folks, no reparations, no vote. No black agenda, no vote. So I guess they're going to need to get their asses handed to them a bunch of more times before they get this message here. Trust me, they're not going to get the message because they're like, yeah, but a black vote means turning down the white agenda. Wilson pitched himself as a candidate who will follow Edwards' example in working in a bipartisan manner to move the state forward and who knows what to do thanks to 25 years of work in state government for Democratic and Republican governors. Wilson was attempting to become the first black candidate to win statewide office in 150 years. Shout out PBS Pitchback. Republicans will hold a strong majority in both the House and Senate. Late in the campaign, two of the other major candidates, Hunter Lundy and Stephen uh, Wakespack, told crowds that Wilson was so unelectable that a vote for him was actually akin to a vote for Landry. Well, that aged pretty good now, didn't it? But the final result in the primary showed that neither Lundy nor Wagspack nor any other candidate could make headway against Landry or Wilson. At Landry's election night party at the Broussard Ballroom, an event space in the small city in Landry's native Acadia, uh, Acadiana, a crowd of Landry supporters and state and local GOP figures snacked on fried alligator and meat pies as the results rolled in. Well, hopefully the cholesterol won't get them first. After the polls closed at 8 p.m. and as the crowd awaited Landry's arrival, his lead swiftly ballooned. Chatter at the party turned quickly to whether the favorite Republican candidate could win without a runoff. A possibility discussed by political insiders for weeks, but one they considered unlikely due to the breakdown of Louisiana's Democratic voters. John Covillian a Baton Rouge-based pollster who typically works with Republican candidates, called the race for Landry at 9.45 p.m. In an interview moments later, Landry spokesperson Kate Kelly said the campaign had been hopeful about the possibility of an outright victory, but Landry expected the race to head for a runoff. That he built a lead large enough to spell a possible outright victory came as a shock. Quote, I didn't have a press release prepared for this, Kelly said. Take the light night off, ma'am. Landry was so certain of his political strength during the primary that he ducked campaign forums where he had to appear on stage with other candidates and skip three of the four statewide televised debates. 
Landry's absence has also limited the opportunities for the other candidates to attract attention by attacking him. After angling for the state's top job for years, Landry made the first major move in the governor's race when he secured the endorsement of the Louisiana Republican Party last November. Critics complained the endorsement came after Landry and the party struck a secret backroom deal. Soccer backroom deals in Louisiana? Perish the thought. Landry brushed off the criticism and soon began to reap the benefits as wealthy business owners began pouring six figure donations into party coffers that could be spent directly on Landry's gubernatorial campaign. That's right. Praise the Lord. Pass the ammunition and pass the hat. You want to know why we need reparations? Because you buy elections in the damn United States of America. My home state, Louisiana, just makes it very, very clear that's what you're doing. They didn't sit up here and give uh, Landry a pat on the back and say, hope you win. They passed the hat and dropped some dollars. Next thing you know, the West was won, or the South was won. Big name Republicans, U.S. Senator John Kennedy, Cassidy, Lieutenant Governor Bill uh, Nungesser, and U.S. Rep. Garrett Graves all passed on the race. That means they didn't run for governor. In May, Trump endorsed Landry, a move that, given the former president's popularity among conservatives, quote, will make it harder to keep Landry out of the runoff, political analyst Ron Fischel said at the time. At the time. So they're sitting up here thinking that Trump supporting him was going to be a bad thing. How'd that turn out? A first-time candidate, Wags Pack, resigned in March after nearly a decade as president of the Louisiana Association of Business and Industry to run for governor. Well, that didn't go so well. Wags Pack campaigned as a Mitt Romney-style Republican whose pro-business plans would make Louisiana so enticing that investment would swell and workers would find plenty of jobs in the state. We are a... Uh, we are a... W work and will state... We're in a work for hire. We're a work and will state. So, yeah. We all saw how well that worked out for employment here, by the way. We all saw how that worked out here. But those messages didn't seem to didn't connect with voters in the state that Donald Trump carried in 2016 and 2020 presidential elections with nearly 60% of the vote. A pro-Landry super PAC hammered Wags PAC in TV ads for serving as a senior aide to then-Governor Bobby Jindal, who left office in 2016, reviled by many voters, reviled by most. Wags PAC won about 5% of the vote. It wasn't even close, people. It wasn't even close. And it is the implosion of the black vote that did it. With, with Bowling Ball Martin and all these other folks telling you, don't worry, when the race actually shows up, black folk will have no choice but to vote Democrat. Because we're going to tell you, you don't want the Republicans to win. Okay, but what are we winning with the Democrats? Well, they ain't as bad. We're no longer voting for not as bad. What are you putting on the table? What are you offering? This is not a matter. You're not going to be able to sit up here and use reverse psychology and scare tactics anymore. Get ready to start losing a lot more elections because this serves as a template. You can't scare people. Or at least you can't scare enough of them. The, 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 the old niggas, these are what I showed you. The old niggas are out there trying to convince you, well, you know what I mean? If y'all just show up now. Okay, but guess what? There's every year there's fewer and fewer of them to support the same old failed tactics and strategies. We asked a very simple question: What is your black agenda, Sean Wilson? He talking about abortion, LGBT rights, talking about everything except the black agenda. Well, then you gave us nothing to show up for. Meanwhile, over on the Republican side, they're talking about a MAGA agenda. Yes, they gave their people something to vote for. You see, what the old civil rights generation did was they taught the world that we don't vote for anything. All you got to do is just tell us as a Democrat, and we will simply show up to vote even if there's nothing on the ballot to vote for. That's the problem. This idea that we're just going to show up to vote even if there's nothing on the ballot to vote for. Just show up and vote anyway. 
just get out there anyway. Isn't that good enough? Well, if you're lucky, they're going to come and serve some catfish and come dance the Dougie with you and Al Green. And we'll call that. And, well, we're going to vote for more Medicaid. Think about that for a few moments. So Sean Wilson lost the race for governor of Louisiana. And what he says is, let's make sure we stay on the governor elect to make sure that he expands Medicaid. People, if that doesn't tell you that the Democrats are trying, they're only, they think their constituency is the old niggas. If that doesn't tell you that that's who their constituency is, I don't know what in the world will. They're telling you they've got nothing. If you are not a geriatric who doesn't care about the economy because you're either retired or on a pension or something else, you're in the old folks home. Yeah, for those of us who are still actually out here trying to survive, they're not offering us anything. But for the folks who have exited the economy, the hub around constituency, well, hey, we can expand Medicaid for you. Yeah, that's because those of us who are still out here working to make things happen, we're, our number one concern is not, well, can we get prescription pill prices down here? My arthritis is acting up again. That's not what we're saying. That's not our priority because we know you let us get our money together. We're going to take care of our own prescriptions. No, for the old folks who just want to sit at home, sing hymns, no offense. They want to stay at home, sing hymns, watch reruns of The Price is Right. That's their constituency. Go to the church. Some old deacon will be sitting up there trying to dance with his rickety knees, said nothing about what you're going to do for us. Nothing. There's nothing on the table. More Medicaid. We already got Medicaid. Well, you can expand Medicaid. Nigga, please. So this day and this time and this era of offering nothing, that's the lesson that's gotten drilled home this weekend is um, if you think you're going to sit up here and offer nothing and then just say, you know, we got to beat Trump. No, you got to beat Trump. We got to beat you. You have to figure out how you're going to beat Trump, Democrats, and we're going to be over here figuring out how we're going to beat you. On account of the fact that you're not offering us anything. Those are going to be the rules. You're not going to sit here and frighten people and say, we don't have to offer you anything except we won't abuse you eh, quite as badly as Trump will. Yeah, we're going to abuse you too, but we won't abuse you as badly as Trump. So you, you go and go, no, 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 no. And that's a non choice. This idea that we need to go have a damn slugfest between who's going to abuse us less. Neither one of you is offering us anything. Then neither one of you is going to get us to get off the couch. How about we try that one? And this is important for us to make a precedent of because now please understand this will not be enough. We're going to keep doing this for a while until they finally get to their heads. Oh, they really will just not show up. Yeah, we figure after three or four more elections, you'll finally get the hint that, yeah, we really just won't show up. There's no reason to vote for you. You're not offering us anything that the other side isn't offering. That is to say, you're offering us nothing. What are you offering to specifically the black vote? Well, you know, I mean, LGBT. Okay, well, look here, uh, Mr. Wilson, you and Andrew Gillum can go see if y'all can get together in the ballroom. We'll take care of our business on our own. If you're not going to offer us anything, let's just drop the damn pretenses and drop the plane around and let's just go. You're not offering us anything. I'm not going to sit up here and waste my time if you're not offering anything. If you are afraid to say that they're what you're going to do for the black constituency. Meanwhile, the Republicans are over there say what they're going to do for white folk and conservatives. You, you're, you, but you're afraid to claim us. OK, we ain't going to claim you and we're not going to play around about it. The Democrats will sit up here and lose elections trying to put pedophilia books in the libraries to appease part of their LGBT constituency. I mean, we all, when black folks show up, well, you know, I mean, we can't really do nothing for you, but show up and vote anyway here. And, man, once we get in office, you know, is, I mean, we're going to see if we can get y'all some more cornbread. They ain't really got nothing to offer you, though. 
But you know, we, we got to get in the office. We're going to do something for us. John Bell Edwards was in office for eight damn years. What the hell do you do for us? Well, I mean, you know, Medicaid, man, if you don't sit your ass down somewhere with this garbage. We didn't elect him for Medicaid, Medicare, or anything else like that. Where's the black agenda? He ain't got one? Okay. These are the final returns on Governor Edwards. But the other thing is they wasn't helping Sean Wilson win very much anyway, so he was just a puppet candidate. But it certainly makes a good point, by the way. It makes a very, very good point. Trust me, this can happen again next year. This can certainly happen again next year. Don't even bother sending Kamala Harris down here in one of her corny-ass purple suits. She's got the same damn makeover specialist that Hillary Clinton does and apparently the same results. No, y'all both just stay home. That's what's happening now. You're not going to scare people with this. You think it'd be a very good idea? It's not. That's what you have to show these people is that you really will pull the trigger, you really will stay home, and you really will leave them to their own devices. And when they lose enough elections... Please be very, very clear. When they lose enough elections, then they're going to start trying to compete with the Republicans to get the right wing vote. Now, they'll still be trying to let through illegals. We let through enough of them because they're anti-black. So it's like, okay, the Democrats to get together with the Republicans, let through as many illegals as you can now. Let's let a bunch of them through. Let's go ahead and do that. That'll work. Just understand, when they do that kind of thing, they're letting you know the suicide we're on. We just want to make sure. No, they're not going to drop their hostility towards us. That's not what's going to happen. They're going to try to figure out a way to circumvent us, neutralize us. That's what they've been doing now. No, we have not a damn thing to vote for. Tell me, what is Jeff Landry going to do that Governor Edwards wasn't already doing? or allowing. Tell me what he's going to stop doing that Governor John Bell Edwards was doing. Anybody remember Alton Sterling? We can go down the damn list. Anybody remember Alton Sterling? Why are you want to sit up here and talk about what was going on down there with what the governor will do or the attorney general will do? By the way, what the hell did they do? Show me the protections that we got from your so-called Democrat candidates. What did they do? Well, I mean, you're going to get less protection from the Republicans. Nigga, can you count? We were already getting zero protection. What do you think is going to happen next? Negative five? They was ignoring... They, yeah, I mean, the Democrats was ignoring our rights, but the Republicans is really going to ignore our rights. They're really going to ignore our rights. How so? Are the Republicans going to walk up while we're going down the street and give us a wedgie? Is that, is that good? what's going to happen next? Well, how many other options you got? So this idea that the Democratic platform is, well, vote for us. We're the less of the bastards in the room. That's, the, that's their campaign strategy. Vote for us. We're not as big of a bastard as Republicans are. Trust us. No, we'll just take our chances where we are. And you figure out how you're going to remain a viable political party without us. You figure out how that's going to happen. Well, we'll just let through more illegals. Yeah, and in five, ten years, they're all voting. Those are supposed to vote Republican, too. That's not a viable strategy. They just vote Republican, too. Well, we got five or ten years to work on it. Okay. See how well ice skating uphill works out for you. And by the way, could have predicted all this for you all here. It was a non-issue. It really, really was. Uh, Sean Wilson's chances of winning the governor's race were about the same as Suge Knight's chances of winning a ballerina contest. It wasn't happening. So there was just really no reason to be following it here. I, I could be talking about something serious, like plaid socks. That's literally what it is. No, sir, you didn't bring an agenda. You didn't bring anything we were voting for. You didn't bring any reason for us to leave the damn house, and we didn't.
And we can do this all over again next year for the president's race and two years after that for Congress and four years from now for the next governor's race. We can do this all over. I said this in 2012, 2016, 2020, or 2018, 2020. We can do this all over again every year if you prefer. If you really just want to do that, we can just do this every year. We ain't got to change a damn thing. We can just do this every damn year if you really just want to. Till you figure out that, by the way, yeah, imagine what these guys can get done while the Democrats are screwing around and, and, and letting races go. Imagine what these guys can get done with these Republicans. Imagine some of the laws they can pass and things they can get in place while you sitting up here throwing away the black vote. Think about that for a few moments. Just remember, Ron DeSantis has been sitting there making a new draconian law and it seems like every damn week he's coming up with some new devilment. This Landry guy's like, man, look here, I got a legislature. I can let's roll for it. Okay. All right. Because what you gonna do with us? Where are we going? We're already locked and boxed. So you can sit there and keep giving them chances. See how that works out for you. You can keep giving chances. You can keep giving them time. They're going to be spending years doing this because now they got legislatures and seats. He's got, man, I got focus. He's got double it. He's been cooking up for years now. What are you going to do? What do you think it's going to look like in four years when he gets done? Hell, not even gets done when he gets started. These black folk here, you know you need to vote for us. It's going to get bad. No, 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 no. If, if you don't give us anything to vote for, then you made it bad. This is sending a clear message. Tell us what you're going to do specifically for the black vote. Oh, you don't know what you're going to do? Well, we'll just stay home till you figure that out. You know the race is coming up this weekend? Ooh, you better run faster, Mr. Wilson. You don't have us pulling you. You better run quicker. Y'all notice that Joe Biden is real quiet this weekend. He got some act right, don't he? Don't worry, he'll be stumbling and mumbling his way next week. But this weekend, quiet as hell. Yeah, he didn't want to get into that one too deep. By the way, where's Obama, y'all? Did anybody see Obama? Did, did anybody see him? Did you see Michelle? Did y'all see Michelle doing the Tootsie Roll for the Sean Wilson campaign? I didn't see it. Did y'all see Michelle out there doing the Millie Rock? I didn't see it. So, okay, just let me know. Everybody got real quiet this weekend. They didn't want to try to put their neck out there. Somebody's picking up what we're putting down. And they are, they're asking themselves seriously, boy, this isn't looking so great. Virginia, Louisiana, this is not looking so great, man. This isn't looking so good. Can we do better than this? Y'all might as well go ahead and get ready to throw the next two or three elections. Save your money. Go buy yourself some new hover rounds. You'll need it. You'll need them. In any case, I wanted to go ahead and hold a brief program with you all here tonight. Just letting you know that I'm keeping on top of everything that's occurring. You're seeing what's happening. It's going down exactly the way we said. All the folks we're talking about, well, Jesus, what happened in 2020? Those folks have gotten real quiet now, haven't they? All the folks who said, well, Jason, you was wrong. Look, take a look in 2020. I said, are you sure we were wrong about that? Yep. Can't you see who's going to the White House? Three years later. By the way, three years later, the tune sure has changed, hasn't it? A whole bunch of folks sure did get quiet, didn't they? They don't want to say anything now. You take a look in Chicago and other places, eh, exactly what we told you. Where is Laurie Drunk Uncle Lightfoot? Where is Keisha Bottom B? Where is Mario Cuomo? 
Yeah, the whole table kind of got swept. And if you don't think that Joe Biden and Kamala are not sitting up here dusting off their resumes, Kamala Harris is trying to see if she can get good lighting in her house for her OnlyFans. If I were her, I wouldn't be looking at the White House very much, ma'am. Yeah, you might want to make sure your, your OnlyFans subscription uh, stays up, up to date. Would hate for you to run out of options. In any case, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here tonight. I want to thank all of you for tuning in tonight's program. And this concludes this broadcast of the Black Channel. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, the Black Authority. And until next time, my brothers and my sisters from around the world, remember, Black is the future and the future is uncompromising.